Hello everybody, welcome to our very first video of education in sport. My name is Ash Dyer and I'm the Primary Education Manager for Cambridge United Community Trust. Now first of all, I do not claim to be a YouTuber or a social influencer, so please bear with me. But the purpose of what we're doing over this video and a series of videos coming soon is for you at home to be able to apply all the cool stuff you've learned in school but in a sporting situation. Our intention is for you to make key decisions, use what you've learned, interact with what we've got, and most importantly, enjoy the prospects of educating yourselves from home. So today's lesson, we're looking at maths, and we're going to be looking at how fractions are used in sport. It's an introduction lesson to fractions, and I hope that you engage with the content and comment and subscribe and get in touch with us with your answers. We want to keep this going. We want you to have a really positive experience when you're at home learning. So with no further ado, let's crack on with the lesson. Right, so here we are. So first of all, what is a fraction? So a fraction simply tells us how many parts we have of a whole. And it's split into these sections. The top section is called the numerator, which is from the Latin word numerous, which is how many parts we are counting. And then if we look at the bottom part, it's called the denominator, which is from the Latin word denomino, which means what we are counting as a whole. I like to remember, D for denominator, D for down, so that I don't get confused. And what we have is those two values are connected together with this line that goes through the middle, which is called a vinculum. And it's not as important that we remember that at this stage, but it is really important that we remember these two. Sorry, vinculum. You will be. Let's have a look at a quick example. I'm going to use this. Cone. Anyone that plays football or trains or does after school clubs will have seen many, many of these. Most coaches, we have like thousands of them. But what I'm going to do for this is make this into a fraction. I need to split this into two parts. So I need to be really, really strong. Hold on. <laughs> so I've now got my whole, which is in two parts. There must be equal parts, otherwise it won't work. But now I've got my two parts, I can see that two parts make my whole here, so my denominator is going to be two. Now, if I were only to count one of these parts, my numerator would be one, because I'm, part, I'm counting one part of the whole. So as I make my fraction there, it's one over two. One part of a whole of two. You might know it better as a half. But that is basically an explanation of how a fraction is made. If I were to put the two parts together um, and have them together, then I'd be counting my two parts. Um, my whole is two which gives me a fraction of two over two, which is a whole. I've got my whole cone back together. Well, kind of. Let's look at another example. If I have to find one fourth or one quarter of these four footballs, I will look first at the denominator, which tells me that this whole is made of four parts. I then need to look at the numerator, which will tell me how many of the parts I need to take away, which in this case is one. So as we can see, that one quarter of four is equal to one. Get in! So the next part of this video is called Maths on Tour. So what we're gonna do is I'll be going out and about meeting some interesting and exciting people, and we're gonna be talking about how maths is applied in their sport or in their role, and we'll have some, a series of challenges which you will then help us to find some answers with. 
I hope you enjoyed today. I'm really, really lucky to have met former world snooker champion, legend of the game, and huge football fan, Neil Robertson. And if you watch the video just coming up, you'll see what happened when I challenged him to a penalty shootout. Enjoy. So here I am with snooker legend and friend of Cambridge United, Neil Robertson. Thank you very much, Neil, for um, helping us with this project today. So Neil, first question, how did you find maths at school? Um, yeah, I found it pretty easy going, I think, um, compared to some of the other subjects anyway. Um, obviously, it re relates to snooker really well, but um, yeah, I, I think, uh, you know, maths and PE were probably my strongest points in school, and then everything else probably fell to the wayside a bit. Brilliant. See, we mentioned about snooker, and maths it plays a really important role in snooker. So how, how is maths important in snooker? Yeah, it's really, port really important because um, you need to be able to work out scores very quickly. Um, the more fluent you can be around the table, working the scores out, um, allowing you to play each shot individually as it comes, knowing what you need to do in front of you, um, makes it a lot easier to play at the highest level, especially when you need snookers and stuff like that as well. Um, you see some players actually make quite a few mistakes in that regard. Um, so maths actually plays a huge part in snooker. Awesome. And finally, this question's more um, for me than anybody else. How good are you at taking penalties? Um, well, with Alexander in goal, uh, not too bad. Um, he doesn't like it when I score one or two, but um, we'll see how we go. Brilliant. So what's going to happen now is we're going to take five penalties each, and we're going to see how well we do against Alexander, and that will create the fractions that we need to determine who wins the penalty shootout. All the best. Thank you very much, Neil. <laughs>
So we've taken our penalties and now it's time to look at the maths behind who was better, who won as um, fractions. So I took five penalties as a whole and of my five penalties, if I look at how many parts of that were successful, how many penalties I scored, I scored two of my penalties. So my fraction is two fifths, two over five. Now we're going to look at Neil's penalties. So Neil also took five penalties as a whole. And the successful parts, the amount of penalties that Neil scored was three. Disappointing for me, but <laughs> great for Neil. Um, so Neil scored three out of his five penalties. So his fraction was three fifths, which is greater than two fifths. But I would like to say, I think the real winner was this this young man here, the goalkeeper, <laughs> Alexander. Oh, yeah. Maybe a challenge is, to, can you work out, based on this information, how many penalties Alexander saved and what that would look like as a fraction? So maybe you can put that in the comments or tweet us to let us know what the answer is for Alexander's save rate. That'd be really, really cool. But thank you very, very much, guys. It's been really, really good fun. Ultimately, I'm gutted I've lost, but... I think that we're really, really happy with that. And I hope that people that are watching can see that fractions are used in football. They're lots of fun. And we'll look at that a lot more in the future. Thanks very much, guys. Yeah, You're awesome. Welcome. But sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. The important thing to remember is that if you do lose, learn, try to improve, and work hard. And then you'll get better. So now, the part we are going to be doing is called Over To You. I'm going to show you a short video of me attempting to do some keepy ups. What I want you to do at home is to create a fraction that shows how many of the keepy ups I did were using my thigh? Have a look. Can you make that fraction? Count how many keepy ups I do and how many of them were using the thigh. Then you can comment, you can tweet us, you can make a video telling us the answer, and maybe you can make some other fractions based on the video. But watch and enjoy. That brings us to the end of our very, very first education in sport video. We hope you enjoyed it. We hope you learned something. I really hope that you interact with us so that we can use your comments and videos in our future videos. But until next time, see you in a fraction.